Microplastics in our food and the environment are a problem of the 21st century. Our use of plastic bottles, plastic packaging and plastic in our clothes has skyrocketed over the past few decades. So far, most people have thought that these microplastics and nanoplastics, they're not really that serious and they're not harmful to your health. However, there was a brand new study that found that people with more microplastics in their arteries had a fourfold higher risk of heart disease and cardiovascular death compared to those without microplastics in their arteries. Now, that's quite alarming and concerning. It's the first study that connects microplastics with an actual lethal chronic disease like heart disease. In this video, I'm going to look at this study, tell you what I think about it, and I'm also going to share you the most common sources of these microplastics in our life and also how to excrete them from your body. So make sure you click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. The study was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. They took 304 people to the study and followed them up for 34 months. People with detected microplastics and nanoplastics within the atheroma had a 353% higher risk of cardiovascular events than those without. That's crazy. The people who had microplastics and nanoplastics inside their arteries had a fourfold higher risk of cardiovascular events and cardiovascular death. Out of the 304 subjects, 58.4% had polyethylene in the carotid artery plaque and 12.1% had polyvinyl chloride. Now this study is quite alarming and concerning, especially given the fact that you can find microplastics virtually everywhere, from water, from foods, from clothes, personal care products, and even the air that you breathe. Don't worry, I'm going to share with you the ways to excrete them from your body. But even based on this study, we don't necessarily know if there's a causal relationship between microplastics and heart disease. It might be that the people who had higher amounts of microplastics and nanoplastics inside their arteries were also more sick, they might have had already existing atherosclerosis from other lifestyle habits and then the microplastics just got stuck in the artery wall. Whereas the people who didn't have already existing atherosclerosis, they might have still had a lot of microplastics inside their body, but because they didn't have the arterial wound, then the microplastics didn't get stuck there either. We don't know that. Maybe like future studies will, you know, reveal some more insight into this. But currently there is no like causal relationship. Regardless, micro and nanoplastics have already been previously linked to some health problems by causing inflammation oxidative stress and metabolic disorders. The microplastics also contain xenoestrogens, which are these foreign estrogenic compounds that mimic estrogen inside the body. Xenoestrogens are linked to obesity, infertility and cancer. So it is probably something that you don't want to have in your body. The problem is our environment is full of microplastics. And when I'm saying that they're literally everywhere, then I'm not joking. That's really the case. Here are the biggest sources of microplastics in our life. Number one, plastic bottles and containers. A recent study found that the amount of microplastics in bottled water is 100 to 1,000 times greater than previously thought. One liter of bottled water contains up to a quarter million invisible microplastics. The problem with plastic bottles is also that they're exposed to heat and sunlight, which mobilizes more microplastics into the water. That's why you should minimize your consumption of plastic bottled water and choose glass bottle whenever possible. Fortunately, there is one easy way to remove the microplastics from your water. A 2024 study showed that boiling water is able to remove at least 80% of nano and microplastics. So when you're at home, just boil the water. Number two, protein sources like meat, fish, and beyond burgers have all been found to contain microplastics. A recent study found that Americans are estimated to consume up 3.8 million pieces of microplastics a year from protein alone. That's because most proteins are packaged in a plastic wrap or box to increase the shelf life and reduce the risk of contamination. In the study, seafood and processed meat had the most amount of microplastics. Here's a graph of the foods they measured in the study. As you can see, the more processed the food is on the right side, the more microplastics it contains. Regular Alaskan Pollock is unprocessed and thus contains quite little microplastics. But if you make fish sticks out of it, then it has a lot more. Likewise, chicken nuggets and breaded shrimp have a lot of microplastics. You can't avoid protein because you need protein to live. And you really can't avoid, practically speaking, the packaged protein either, even if it's packaged in plastics, because the plastic containers, they are going to increase the shelf life and also reduce the risk of contamination. So this is one of those things I think that is not really something that you can really control that much. Of course, you should choose meat options or protein options that aren't packaged in plastics. But realistically speaking, that's not really something that you want to trade off. You still need the protein. Number three, plastic cutting boards. When we're talking about meat, then a 2022 study saw that plastic cutting boards are a source of microplastics in meat. 
you basically are cutting into the board with a knife, which detaches the microplastics from the board, and it ends up in the food that you're cutting. The simple fix for that is to use wooden or stainless steel cutting boards. Number four, plastic tea bags have been seen to leach billions of microplastics and nanoplastics into the water. You can easily recognize plastic tea bags. They're usually triangle shaped and are quite shiny. Regular cloth tea bags are safe, and you should use those instead. Loose leaf tea is also a safe option. Number five, all plastic containers and packaging, like top aware. They all contain microplastics and over time, even when they're not exposed to heat, they begin leaching microplastics into the food. Even if the box says BPA free or something like that, then it doesn't mean anything because, you know, you could have BPS, BPE, BPF, whatever other, they have like an entire alphabet of BPAs that they can use instead of BPA. So all plastics generally have some compounds. Instead, you should use glass jars and glass food boxes. Number six, personal care products. Different kinds of skincare products, creams, shaving cream, shampoos, shower gels, etc. You should use more natural cleaning agents like regular soap or natural shampoos. When you're looking at skincare products, then the ingredients should ideally be food grade, meaning that you could eat them without any harm to your health. Some good ingredients in skincare products are like, you know, olive oil, tallow, honey, beeswax, clay, sea kelp, whatever, like these natural ingredients, those are generally safe and they don't have these xenoestrogens. And number seven, clothes made of synthetic fabrics, such as gym clothes, underwear, shirts, etc. Polyester underwear has been seen to have contraceptive effects. That's because these synthetic materials, they leach these xenoestrogens into your body through your private parts, which is, you know, the most unfortunate way of obtaining them. Women using menstrual products have also been found to be exposed to these xenoestrogens. All right, you get the point. The microplastics, they're everywhere, literally even in the air that you breathe because of air pollution. Does this mean that we're pretty much doomed as a species? We're supposed to become infertile, obese, and also get heart disease? Well, not quite, because there's still quite a lot of things that we can do to minimize our exposure and also excrete these microplastics. Fortunately, there are a lot of scientists scientists waking up to the danger of these microplastics and they are working on extracting these microplastics from the sea, the soil and the environment. Now the methods of extracting microplastics from the environment are usually completely different than what you would use for your own body so I'm not going to cover those methods. Instead I'm going to give you some more practical day-to-day -day habits that you can use to eliminate microplastics from your body. Number one, sweating has been found to excrete bisphenol A or BPA which is one of the most common microplastics. In a study they saw that 16 out of 20 people had BPA in their sweat, even in those people who had no BPA in their blood or urine. This means that sweating and exercising or taking a sauna can be one of the most powerful and one of the most important ways to eliminate these microplastics and other chemicals from your body. There's also evidence that sauna use and sweating is able to eliminate heavy metals and other chemicals from your body as well. So it's not just for the microplastics. Pretty much everyone living in a modern world who is exposed to air pollution and other kinds of environmental pollutants, all of the people would want to have like a regular sauna practice. I've made a lot of videos about the longevity benefits of the sauna. Based on the evidence, then taking a sauna at least three to four times per week is going to dramatically lower your risk of heart disease and Alzheimer's. But it also turns out that sauna is also very important for eliminating the chemicals and microplastics from your body. Exercising hard or doing hot yoga can also work but the amount of sweating is not comparable to the sauna. Number two, blood donation has been shown to lower the amount of these forever chemicals, which are called PFAS in the blood. In a study, they took 285 firefighters and saw their blood PFAS levels decrease quite significantly after blood donation. Blood donation has also other health benefits by lowering excess iron from the blood. Sweating has also been shown to excrete PFAS. Number three, another method that's been found to lower PFAS levels is cholesteramine, which is a bile acid sequestrant drug. It binds to the bile in the gastrointestinal tract to prevent its reabsorption. Number four is something interesting but not yet proven, which is mushrooms. They find that different mushrooms and fungi are able to degrade microplastics and other waste materials. Now, there's no evidence that eating mushrooms would break down microplastics inside your body, but it can certainly be used for environmental microplastics, and the scientists are actively working on that. Number five, ingesting algae is probably able to bind to microplastics and excrete them. Algae like chlorella and spirulina has been found to degrade plastics. Again, there's currently no evidence 
sense that all your supplements would break down microplastics inside your body, but all your supplements do bind to heavy metals and other toxins. So I wouldn't be surprised if the same happened to microplastics. And lastly, there's a clinical trial currently being done in China where they use a concoction of supplements to treat male infertility and reducing microplastics in the semen. The concoction is called Wu Wei Fuzeng Yijing Decoction, and it contains 30 grams of astragalus, 15 grams of wolfberry, 15 grams of achirantes, 15 grams of schizandra, and 12 grams of plantain. The results of this study aren't out yet, but it will be interesting to see if these over-the-counter supplements are able to remove microplastics and improve fertility. Overall, I have to say that I don't think that we are doomed. Microplastics are certainly a big problem and they're not going away anytime soon. However, what we can do is minimize our exposure by choosing healthier alternatives and also actively working on lowering the amount of toxins, heavy metals and microplastics inside our body with things like sweating. Even blood donation a few times a year might actually be something to look into. All right, that's it for this video. Make sure you click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. Other than that, thanks for watching. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.